Who's a fall of the zombie banks, one after another, possible, and would that destroy the finance oligarchs? Yeah, of course, but it's, you know, but it has to be, no one's going to escape it. Uh, and on the other end of this, there's going to be, the bankers are going to try to flee um, to territories where, like, um, Prince from um, that group of, um, uh, of mercenaries. Water. Yeah, he's over there in the Middle East now, UAE, without any extradition agreement. So you see more bankers going to UAE and other territories. Halliburton the- moved there. So literally, we do see them running off with the loot. And in a yeah. way, that's even more dangerous to see the elites running, you know, the Bushes buying all this land in Paraguay. That's even creepier to think that they know they've committed so many crimes that they're just fleeing uh, leaving us with the, uh, the, the, the aftermath of what they've done. But I think at the, at the end of the day, that's why it's good news that you're there, I'm here. So many other great people, Ron Paul, are out there talking about the real issues so that uh, hopefully uh, we can uh, pick up the pieces when all this is over and move in the right direction. Perhaps the globalists will miscalculate, but I think right now it's so important that we all get the word out and expose this. Uh, Max Kaiser, final quick comment from you. Uh, where do you see gold um, this time next year? I mean, I, I know we're talking about 2,500 by the end of the year, and now that now that looks believable for a lot of folks. We've passed all these psychological milestones, 1,800 now today. But 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 where do you see us in August of next year? Well, it's going I'm just banking on continuation of the next 10 years. What we've seen in the previous 10 years, and that's 22, 23 percent annualized compounded rates of return for gold and silver. And that's all you need to know. As far as any interim moves up or down, don't fo- don't look at that at all. A very interesting study came out just a few days ago. They said people who were held their gold and did not try to time it on the tops and bottoms did substantially 100% better than people who, according to basic timing models, try to get in and out of their gold and timing these swings. Those people actually are doing bad compared to people who just hold it, you know, and and, and let it ride. Absolutely. I mean, look at an 11-year graph. Uh, gold's below 311 years ago, silver $5. Silver's above 40. Uh, gold is at 1800 You don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand what's happening there. Max Kaiser, thank you so much for joining us. Anytime. Thanks, Alex. All right. There's Max Kaiser, another one of the extremely informative guests that we interview each and every day live on the radio and now on these InfoWars special reports and starting, of course, September 1st. Uh, Just in a few weeks, we start the weekly 30-minute news transmission every night at 7 p.m. Central at PrisonPlanet.tv. Now for a closer look inside the uh, now entering the fifth day of riots in the UK and and fires and looting all over uh, what is known as England inside the UK is Paul Joseph Watson of PrisonPlanet.com. We're going to go to a short break and come right back to him. It is a big idea, a new world order. In the near future, Earth is dominated by a powerful world government. Is known as the Bilderberg Group. Could their objective be world domination? For thousands of years, their dark order grew. Now, as they hail the birth of the new world order, their great dream of exterminating 80% of humanity is at hand. For the first time in history, the elite's plan for world government is blown wide open. You will learn the secret that drives the entire New World Order agenda. Bilderberg is making great progress toward a world government, and only an educated, informed public can stop them in their tracks. Alex, it's Chalabi, eh? For the first time, all the pieces have been put together. The dots have been connected, and the picture is crystal clear. Earth's ruling elite believe they have discovered the fountain of youth. But before they can attain it, 80% of us must die. A psychopathic technocracy is establishing world government so there can be no escape from their plan. The new world order is the old world order. I mean, it's just the names have changed, the appearances have changed. Most people have no idea. They're not after money. They have all the money they need. They're after power. That's their aphrodisiac. 
pull up a plane in Munich. They interrogated me in four hours. Some shots were fired. I need you to move off the property. Their great dream of exterminating 80% of humanity is at hand. Endgame. Blueprint for global enslavement. You have been warned. Thank you for joining us for this InfoWars.com special report. Paul Watson is a longtime reporter for InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com in the UK. We're now entering the fifth days of some of the worst rioting ever to hit the United Kingdom. And Paul has discovered some uh, very important information. Days ago, we received reports from journalists on the ground that police were ordered to stand down. As of today, they have admitted that indeed they were ordered to stand down. And there are other reports that men posing as journalists uh, were basically uh, offering money to youth if they too would engage in rioting. The question is, why has a green light been given at this time for this type of activity, attacking family-owned shops, burning down businesses, and even homes? Paul Watson from Prison Planet. What's the latest? Well, that's correct, Alex. Yesterday we reported that, quote, the lackluster police response with numerous reports from the public that police stood back and allowed looters to pillage both large department stores and private small businesses for hours on end. And today that's been confirmed because sources from within Scotland Yard have confirmed to both the Daily Mail and the Times of London um, that police were ordered to, quote, stand and observe on those first few nights of rioting as the looters, the rioters, set fire to buildings, both homes and small businesses. They were ordered to stand back and let it happen. And, of course, we said that this was going to be the case all along because it's routine, standard operating procedure. The authorities allow the chaos to spiral, to build, and it causes... It, provokes the uh, general public, specifically the middle class, to demand the police state measures which the government is all too keen to later give them. And that's exactly what's going to happen tomorrow with Parliament being recalled. Uh, they're going to have a debate and they're going to set the stage for a law which is going to basically criminalise public gatherings without government uh, permission. So that's the upshot of it. And so to claim that this is some kind of organic political revolution against bankers is fundamentally naive um it's it's a mistake to embrace what are essentially a group of drunk mindless teenagers and pretend that they're on some kind of frontline war against the establishment because they're not um you know not every flash mob is a revolution and to pretend that it is is again completely naive it's wishful thinking well you know why that's being done uh, they're blurring the lines so that now when anybody does have a political flash mob or when anybody does actually go after real targets uh, like the banksters, then it can be uh, demonized. We've seen cases here in the U.S. where they send the army in plain clothes to spy on in the Fed peaceful demonstrations. Uh, and so uh, the U.K. government, as you know, Paul, four years ago came out and said, as austerity measures come in, there is going to be... Uh, intensified social resistance so we've got to put a police state in place and so now ahead of that they're just allowing the hooligans who are just your regular sports fans who riot after a soccer game or riot after you know games in brazil basketball games in los angeles uh soccer games in south africa it's the same types all over the world mainly the welfare class that go out and uh uh, do this as a sport and as a way to steal some loot and some goodies. And so now their activities targeting mom and pop shops and homes is being transposed over legitimate political uh, debate and discussion. And the fact that they've waited four days to finally get the parliament back uh, and do this is incredibly frightening. Well, yeah, and that's why it's completely stupid to embrace them, because then that's what we're going to be labelled with, is the, the, support, the supporters of these mobs. I mean, just look what they're attacking. 
they're not laying siege to the Houses of Parliament. They're laying siege to JD Sports. They're attacking family-owned local businesses that have survived two world wars and raising them to the ground. They're attacking charity shops, cat rescue centres, hospitals that care for sick babies. And now they're killing people by running them down in their cars in Birmingham, just 20 minutes from where I live. You have the video of this young Malaysian kid lying on the street bleeding. The rioters pretend to help him up, then threaten to stab him and steal his stuff. How on earth is that protesting against bankers? I mean, these are just opportunist thugs. And so I'm sorry, but that doesn't represent me. I don't think it represents our movement. And I think it's foolish to try and embrace it and say that it does, because later down the line, we will be discredited and blamed for all this chaos, just like the Tea Party is being blamed for the financial collapse. They're going to pin it on us. Oh, yeah. I wonder they're... if the Tea Party is causing what's happening in Israel with the protest or or or, or the protest ongoing in Egypt. Uh, you know. Uh, Rand Paul put it well. It's like the fire department shows up to put out your burning house and you blame them for starting the fire. Uh, there is such a pent-up anger, though, at the corrupt system that people are hoping that this is the uh, revolution that people uh, are looking for. Now, Paul, there's another big issue here. You notice these riots are going on and these racial robberies and things are going on in Chicago, in New York. Uh, in the other few U.S. cities where they have a total gun ban for citizens. That's where the uh, welfare-type people go. They congregate. The opportunistic criminals congregate because they know they're going to be protected and they're going to be feeding on unarmed citizenry. Look at England, where you've had people who've been robbed three times in a row in their own home. They get an illegal gun. They shoot one of the intruders. They get the book thrown at them. I've seen cases in England, people pushing someone down a flight of stairs that's robbing them. They get the book thrown at them. So there's a real desire by the social engineers in England to leave the general law-abiding public servile and dependent on the state so that the state can prey on the public and then also menace them with the zombie welfare hordes. Do you concur with that analysis? Yes, I do. And for people to say that because we don't embrace these looting hooligans means that we somehow support the system is asinine. I mean, try and hold more than one concept in your head at the same time. I know it's difficult for some people, but try and do it. This is not something in, in Britain that started as a result of the financial collapse three years ago. I mean, this is an element of British society that stretches back decades. We've always had this intimidating underclass and it's always been used by the establishment as a tool against general society, the middle class law abiding people. Uh, you can talk to anyone who's lived amongst this in England and with all due respect to Max Kaiser, who I don't know, he may live in some swanky part of Paris. But I mean I grew up with I was born on a council state in Sheffield on a poor in a poor northern city. I went to school with some of these types of people. You know, my first property that I bought was across the road from a crack house in the poorest part of town. And this is what these mobs, these yobs like to do. It's fun for them to go and burn things and steal things. It's as one person in The Guardian today described it, and he was actually involved in the riots in Liverpool back in the 80s. He said it's basically like Nintendo Wii come to life. It's just fun for them. They have no idea. They have no concept of some kind of backlash against the bank. It's fun to light somebody's house on fire and have a woman jump to firefighters and then attack the firefighters. And again, it's a complex issue. We know the government let this happen so they could then have shoot to kill orders for peaceful protesters because they know the resistance to them is mounting. This is more than, you know, one little thought in our head. This is three dimensional, four dimensional thought. We understand that when parliament members start calling for shooting, uh, arsonist that it's going to be used against the general public. But I'm sorry, you come to my house and try to set a fire, that's attempted murder, I'm going to kill you. I couldn't imagine living in England where where people that are out defending their homes are being demonized right now. That's the one thing that the street thugs can't deal with and that the nanny ninny state can't deal with is neighborhoods banding together, the baseball bats all selling out, uh, there in England, and people fighting back. And it's not even the police now that have been fighting back these crowds of miscreants, some of them as young as nine years old, robbing liquor stores. Uh, 
It's the fact that the people are now standing up that is backing them off in some areas. And so that is certainly good.